Okay, so as we talked about in class, the first step of that reaction is in fact going to be the collision of solvent with that acid and Okay, so we've got the protonated solvent, and then from there, that most basic atom on the ester collides with that protonated solvent molecule, and that gets us to the first step of the reaction. Okay, um, what if you had shown that from the first step and shown it directly colliding with the acid? Um, that would be okay, even though it's, it's much, much, much more likely to be the protonated um, solvent that would be the, the acid in that reaction because of that first step of the reaction that we discussed in class. Okay, so from that point then, now we have still tons of these ethanol molecules around. They're in huge excess because they're solvent. So we've got this very likely collision, making the first of the tetrahedral intermediates. Here in particular, these acid catalyzed mechanisms are reversible. Okay, again, the most likely base in this reaction is the, the one that's in large excess in the reaction mixture. Okay, there's that neutral tetrahedral intermediate. That can be deprotonated. Okay, and so now we have a possibility to compare the two possible leaving groups. So there's the methanol leaving group, and earlier on we had, you know, put that in a different color, we had the ethanol leaving group, and we can track that ethanol um, all the way through the reaction mixture. Okay, so now that we have that that new leaving group, we can have a collapse again of that tetrahedral intermediate, expelling that leaving group, and that gets us to that other possible product. There's that leaving group that just left. Still though in very large excess is that solvent. So still the most likely to act as the base in that reaction. And then we've essentially regenerated the catalyst that can go back to the reactor with another molecule of starting material. One of the big reasons why it's important to have that ethanol as the solvent in the reaction is because each of these steps is reversible. And so there's this point where the tetrahedral intermediate could actually have collapsed and will collapse to expel that original leaving group to go right back towards the start. 
And so by having an excess in that reaction mixture, you get more and more probability that these reactions are going to go in the forward direction rather than the reverse direction. Okay, so this question is just asking us to consider the relative ratios of, of the compounds. And when we get to the intermediate, if you look back at one of the intermediates after a couple steps of this one, we have this protonated, protonated amine, uh, protonated amide that's formed. And if we don't have any base present, then there's nothing to deprotonate that. So what ends up happening is that the nucleophile, another molecule, the nucleophile, ends up protonating it. And if we use a, one of the molecules of nucleophile to react with the electrophile, so one of those reacts with the electrophile, if another one reacts just as an acid-base reaction, well then we're wasting half of the nucleophile molecules just to do acid-base reactions. So we do, we either need to have two equivalents of the nucleophile for every molecule of electrophile so that one molecule can act as the nucleophile, the other molecule acts as the base later on in the reaction mixture, or we do one equivalent of the nucleophile and we add one equivalent of a non-nucleophilic base, like Koenig's base. So in this particular reaction, the second one, remember that all the steps were reversible all the way through, and we got to this point where we had a tetrahedral intermediate Oops, wrong bonding. I just want to get the colors right here. So the ethyl. So with this tetrahedral intermediate, an OCH3 versus an OET, they're approximately basically equal in terms of their leaving group ability. And so if we just had a one to one mixture of the electrophile and of the solvent, well, about half the molecules would be sitting in form A, and then half the molecules would be sitting in the form where the methyl, methoxy group was substituted for the ethyl group. Let's just draw that in here. So after a couple more steps, So because of that similarity in leaving group ability, if we just have a one-to-one -one ratio of the starting compound, starting electrophile, and the solvent, we're going to have a one-to-one -one ratio of those two possible products. As soon as you start to have an excess, so two-to-one, or three-to-one, or four-to-one, or a large excess like solvent, now all the more likely collisions are going to be with solvent molecule and we're much more likely to push that equilibrium toward the product side.